agriculture volunteers received a three-day training as an introduction to Shea in the northern regions of Ghana. The first day of training, Professor Francis Chimza from the University of Developmental Studies in Tamale came to Daloon to perform a lecture on Shea. He discussed the biology, ecology, as well as the threats of Shea trees. Peace Corps volunteers working in Shea focus on conservation and management, and the new volunteers received an introduction on this topic. Francis also discussed an overview of the Shea industries. He presented the latest research from the University of Developmental Studies on Shea seed germination, growth, and how to transplant. He also discussed the propagation of Shea through different methods, which we applied later in the field, such as grafting, and will be shown in this video. As Peace Corps volunteers, Francis explained that there are many ways that we can assist in the sustainability of the Shea industry. These issues include bushfires, as well as parasitic plants that affect most Shea trees, such as mistletoe. We discussed the key quality parameters in Shea butter processing, such as free fatty acids, peroxides, impurities, and moisture content, and how high quality nuts can be achieved even through the traditional practices of processing here in Ghana. The next two days in the field, we observed and also applied what we learned in these lectures. Existing Shea Committee members also discussed the many Shea-related projects that can be implemented by volunteers in their villages, such as soap making, formation of women's groups, village savings and loans associations, as well as connecting their women's groups to sustainable markets, and many other projects. Yes, on share management and share parkland, one of the major important things to the industry is propagation. Propagation is important because when propagation is done, we reduce the long gestation period of share plant from the normal 15 to 20 years. It will reduce to about seven to 10 years. Um, for share propagation from the research from UDS in Ghana, we have done different several research on the propagation methods, but effectively, share does well or has a high percentage when we conduct grafting. And for grafting on share, uh, we've realized that two approaches is very good and works well. That's top grafting and side grafting for share propagation. Each of these methods have proven to give us about 80% success rates on the share and to reduce the long gestation period of the share tree. To conduct grafting on share, it is very important that one, of course, has share seedlings that are growing, either in the nursery or in the wild. They can be share saplings or share seedlings. In the wild, you one can conduct grafting on already grown one. And then also in its nursery, one can conduct grafting on the share seedlings that are grown in the nursery. To conduct grafting also, it is important to select scions. Scions are um, the stocks that are obtained from matured trees. And you obtain these ones, you need to select them from desired traits or desired trees with good characteristics that you desire. One is maybe bigger nuts or nuts that, have, that contain high oil content. And when these scions are selected, they are prepared by preparing them, one has to take off the scions from the mature trees and then take off unwanted leaves on the scions. And then the scions must also be hardened off. By hardening off, we keep the scions for three to four days to harden the scion off so that when they are mounted on a rootstock, they would last or the union would be successful. And then one must choose rootstocks also that needs to be grafted on and these rootstocks must be straight upright and the length of both the rootstock and the scion must be within a range that is recommended to be a pencil size or diameter of a pencil and these are desired ones and they are easy to work on so the rootstock must be selected and prepared by preparing the rootstock one needs to cut off at a very recommended angle um, to take off the top of the rootstock crown and then using a sharp edge grafting knife make an insertion on the rootstock a vertical insertion on the rootstock downwards 
and then the scion also must after being prepared and leaves taken off must be shaped into a v-shaped edge and this v-shaped edge would then be insected into the rootstock where an insertion has been made and the insertion can be done into the rootstock and then a transparent polyton sheet that is cut in a recommended strip form of about two to three centimeters long should be used to tie between the union of the rootstock and the scion tied firmly and then wrapped and bound and this tiring can be done till the, the two unions is firm and when it's firm yes you could now hold the ends and fasten it well when this is done one could use a polythen sheet um it can be a pure water sachet and then cover up the top of the scion this can be done just to um, reduce evapotranspiration transpiration and to conserve moisture within the scion um, one can observe the grafton union on an interval of weekly interval to see whether the graft union is successful or not evidence of graft union success can be found on the scion where the notes shoots will be coming out from the notes of the scion new shoots will be developing and when this new shoots develop it means that the scion has had a complete union with the rootstock and then the bound grafting tip could be taken off from the union or it can take off or come off by itself too and within this um, a week or two if you place a polythene or a sachet on the rootstock the, the polythene should be taken off after a week or two when the union is successful and then intervals of weekly intervals could be done to observe grafting take or success and if your graft is successful within two to three weeks evidence can be seen on the scion with new shoots coming up and this is a simple way to carry out grafting on an already grown seedling or sapling or on even a self seedling in the nursery Should I go? If you say that you are mine, I'll be here till the end of time. So you got to let me know. Should I stay or should I go? It's always taste, taste, taste. You're happy when I'm on my knees. Um, this is the uh, Tapinantus, that's a scientific name, but commonly known as Mosato. It's a very, it's a threat to the shed tree. Um, this is not just severe, but by the time you know, some are so severe that it will engulf the whole branches coming down and then by the time you know the tree itself is even dead. So you might see at your community that this is a threat, a lot of shed trees. Some shed park lands have about 80% engulfed with this. Every tree would almost have this kind of. Uh, mistletoe on it and then prevention how do you prevent it just try if it's near your reach and somebody can climb take it off from the main branch let's assume if it engulfs if let's um there's this mistletoe engulfs this branch don't go near the mistletoe just take off the whole branch from here and i could use it for firewood for poor wood so take off a branch that is far away from the mistletoe and, um pruning <coughs> This particular project of this pruning, um, we started the concept some two, three years back. We realized that most of the parklands, we don't have nursery, but most of the parklands have always a cluster of share tree growing. When you look around, you will not see just one share tree, just one share seedling growing. You might see two, three, four or more. But we, we, we try to do what we call control pruning. And this particular project was called um, Farmer manage natural regeneration farmer manage natural regeneration you let the farmer himself or herself manage it it's a natural way to regenerate a tree it can be done on a lot of species share cashew any other tree that's good in the world how do we do it do we, we control we do a control pruning on young ones young seedlings young saplings or even um, young share trees
which of course it means village savings and loan association yeah, is to help communities to mobilize some funds. You know, in most of the communities, there are no financial institutions which could support the women in terms of giving them loans for them to do their businesses. Every woman can be able to save at least one city per week. So what they are doing is to sit for meetings every week. Mostly uh, what they do is to self-select themselves. It is made up of eight models. We have the, the group's leadership and elections. We have social financial purchase savings and credit policies. We have the development of their constitution because the constitution is to govern the group, is to govern them. Record keeping is very, very important. So how to manage the meetings. And we also have a, 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 a leadership. They are made up, we call them management committee, which is made up of five members. So the magas are precise over the meeting. So he has to, she has to make sure that everything is in order. Then the process it, it starts. So the social fund is determined by the group. According to the constitution, they will decide how much they have to do with the social fund, but they have to ensure that at least every member of the group will be able to contribute to the social fund and also buy the share purchase as well. And the secretary will call them one by one, one after the other. We have three booths. We have one for social fund, one for fines, and then one for share purchase. They have to sit uh, in a circular order. And the reason is that when it is like every member can see the transactions that are going on. Any member can borrow from the social fund. When, when they buy the share, at a point they can start taking loan from the share. And then in taking the loan, you cannot take more than three times of your share. When you take the loan, you pay the loan every month. And when they take the loan, as we are talking, they use it to add up to the, the little capital that they have so that they can expand their businesses. Mm -hmm.